Hi and welcome to episode 55 of the This Is Reportage podcast. My name is Alan Law, I'm the founder of This Is Reportage and This Is Reportage family and I'm a photographer too. It's an absolute honour to have our overall photographer of the year 2018 on the podcast today, the brilliant Liam Shaw. One half of the fab duo that is York Place Studios. Not only did Liam win our Photographer of the Year in 2018, but he's also third overall in terms of lifetime awards won from us, with a quite staggering 21 reportage awards and 11 story awards to his name. On top of all those accolades, though, he's also a lovely, lovely guy. Tune in today as Liam talks all about the story behind his Birth to Grave reportage award, whether he feels any pressure when becoming more well-known in the documentary field, working with the equally talented Dominique Shaw, who you can hear interviewed on episode 26 of the podcast, tips on submitting to awards, layered imagery and the influence of street photography, a rock and a hard place question, and so much more. Hey, Liam, how you doing? I'm very well, Alan. How are you? I am good. Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. How's how's things with you? You're up north, aren't you? In England, north, yeah, north that's England? right. Newcastle, yeah, all the way, as as pretty much as north as you can go. Right, yeah, that is that's, that's that's about as far from me down in Cornwall as you could be, really. Yes, it's um, we're kind of the opposite ends, I guess, of the country. Yeah, we are, aren't we? Which is a shame. It's a shame. It is a and shame. yeah, how how are you? Um, you know, in general, what's what what are you up to at the moment? How's things? I'm fine. Um, we've just been um recording like a pre-record. I've gone to visit Dom because obviously lockdown's coming on. So uh, well, today. So oh, yeah. uh, it was just a case of pre-recording some stuff that we had to do that we had planned to do later in the month, but we just had to move that forward. Uh, okay cool okay and well, that's that's cool cool and i've got to start with that you just mentioned her so i think it's, it's the main thing that i think everyone would love to know um yeah how did you meet dominique how long have you two been married? <laughs> 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 yes yeah, so something that crops up all the time of course we are siblings yes <laughs> People yeah. must, because I remember first, you know, hearing of you guys. I, I, pres- I think maybe a lot of people presume your husband and wife. Do you think? Do you get that asked? Then? Uh, yeah, all the time. Even when, because um, Dominic's husband is um, a videographer and yeah, he works with us on a regular basis. So even because we're the photographers at a wedding, the, ov- the sometimes they say like, "Oh, you're the couple." I'm like, "No, no, it's, you know, don't we look a little bit alike?" You know? <laughs> Oh, it's funny. Sorry, mate. I had to ask that. I just thought that would be. <laughs> it's like, honestly, it happens all the time. <laughs> I guess it's, it's just not many, I don't think, a brother and sister kind of combos. So it's kind of unusual. Yeah, exactly. I think I just can't. Can you think of anyone else in the, I don't know, wedding world that's brother and sister shooting I can't, together? No, I mean, I know, in, you know, I've met brothers who work together, um, not necessarily in weddings, but in other kind of fields. But no, not a brother and sister. I don't know why that is. It's kind of, it's kind of strange. Yeah, I guess so. I think maybe it's just rarer in life to have brother and sisters working together. I yeah, don't know. perhaps. Yeah, mm. I don't know. I don't As... know about it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. No, you should do a research project, Liam. Do a research. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some so, to do. do it this month. <laughs> Yes, do it this month while we're all a little bit quieter. Yeah, so this is being recorded on the 5th of November, which yeah, is the first day of the second lockdown in, in England, isn't it? And mm-hmm. what's yeah. it been like for you this whole, you know, from March though this year in general? You know, how have you been, you know, business-wise, but also kind of like mental-wise? How's it, how's it been for you? Probably much the same as every other photographer and business in this country. I mean, it's obviously not easy, but at the same time, it's a case of just looking at the positives because, you know, even every negative comes with a positive. So there's been more time to spend at home with my partner, Leanne. I've got, we, had, we got to spend, um, my parents gave us uh, their dog to look after because they were actually stuck abroad. So we had like oh, five yeah. months of Paddington, who's their dog, staying with us, which was amazing. And I love that. Oh, that's nice. Cool name as well. Yeah, yeah, he looks like Paddington, yeah. Paddington <laughs> Bear, yeah. Um, and again, just able to kind of focus on other aspects of the business that maybe we hadn't given enough attention to and other things we just put off for a while. So in that sense, it was, it was kind of been some positives. But yeah, obviously, I'm looking forward to getting back to weddings, you know. Oh, yeah, man. Gosh, me too. Oh, well, that sounds, I mean, that sounds good that it hasn't been just, you know, awful um, for you. Um, 
how have you been mentally though you've been okay you always seem whenever i've met you you're always a very happy chap so but yeah, yeah how have you been? fine just you know i kind of just roll with the punches you know <laughs> it's um i i just think obviously look this is bad but life is like this you know it's not always going to be perfect there's always going to be problems every year there's going to be something and I, I know I'm going to have worse years than this, so in that oh, sense, man. Really, that's a good way to think of it. Yeah. But I hope not. I hope that. Well, you know, everybody does. Do you know what I mean? It's just, this is. I, I hope to look back at this year and kind of think, oh yeah, you know, remember some of the positive things that happened, and not just you know, okay, we didn't get to shoot weddings, but actually, we. I mean, to be fair, we have done probably more than most people this year because we shot quite a few before. Yeah, we shot. I think it was three or four before March. Before and then we think we've done another five smaller weddings. So, uh, okay, or five cool. in total. Dom, Dom did one on her own. Oh, wow, man. No. <laughs> what was that? Because I, I remember asking Dom and you, you, um, on the podcast, and you two always shoot together, don't you? Um, yes, for the most part. I mean, okay, very occasionally we'll do kind of a small wedding separately, but for the most uh, okay. part, we're together. Right. And what are they? Have you done? You said you've done a few. Co- have there been like kind of COVID ones then that you've done um, recently? like yeah, you know 15 I've, people ones or 15 people but that's um to be honest that's not that unusual for us like we always do quite a number of weddings a year that are around that number so oh, okay so yeah so we have small weddings all the time and weddings where there's not necessarily i guess a lot of um like set pieces you know like this obviously the ceremony but outside of that often we'll do weddings where it's just people kind of hanging around and it's more of a party kind of atmosphere but without dancing even so there's like not even necessarily speeches it's just people chilling so that's so it's because that's something that we've done on a fairly regular basis for the past few years it's it wasn't i guess that foreign to us okay that's cool yeah. do you what are your thoughts on you know I, I think a lot of people well for some photographers you know faced with smaller weddings with less guests they can find mm-hmm. it tough you know it can be tougher to 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 know what to photograph when it's the same maybe 10 15 people for hours and hours do you have any kind of tips and advice for the in for those scenarios then i mean i love it i i love it when there's nothing to photograph that's my absolute favorite part of a wedding because I'm not That's... really, I'm not really looking for any moment in particular. I'm just looking for something to kind of something that interests me. And most of the time, I'm looking for potential in photographs. So I'm looking for things that I, the moments before a photograph, essentially, and that can be anything, can be subtle, real subtle things. So that's kind of how I approach the photography. Okay, that's cool. Right. You can have, like, for example, if the speeches are happening, it's kind of a, like a very obvious thing. You can't miss it, right? You're photographing mm-hmm. it or the ceremony. But when there's just people kind of gathered around, that's where you can kind of look for, I guess, either more subtle moments or, I mean, yeah, we could get into even discussing what, what is a moment, really. But anyway. but What uh, is a moment, Liam? What yeah, is a moment? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, a moment is something that essentially... Um, for me anyway, is something that I personally find interesting. So something that kind of shouts out to me. Um, and it can be not, it, it doesn't even need to be like a person. It can be just something that you connect with. So, um, That's cool. it, you know, it, I, you can really, I, I mean, I could talk for hours on this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. We've got time. <laughs> <laughs> oh no that's cool though it's yeah it is cool it's just it's it's so interesting hearing your viewpoints on this all man it, it really is so do you never get i don't know do you never get you never get bored at all you know even if it's like just like five guests and it's like you know two no. two hours no that's cool. no, no i love it yeah I, it's one of the it's i always think well it's a first of all it's a complete privilege for any of us to be asked to shoot a wedding and be mm. kind of brought into someone's life you know, and just see behind the curtain of what's going on. So I love that. But just that, you know, you're getting paid to be creative, you know? I mean, how cool is that? That's amazing. We're so lucky to do that. Yeah, no, you're so right. You're so right. It's just interesting talking about that because I just know a lot of people, you know, they always do ask, you know, what do you do during the quiet times when there's not much Mm -hmm. going on? So it's always good to hear um, you can you can look for you can I, I guess you look for kind of jump off points so you're kind of looking for things that um 
the obvious thing is to look for a moment, whatever that is, that's something that speaks to you. But you can also lead by composition first. So you can look for things that, like the way that people are balanced, the way that people are separated. And that can be a, okay, that's a starting point of an idea. Because photographs, you know, to me, most photographs are ideas. That's, you know, it's, you want to be shooting with some kind of intent of what it is that, you know, Dom does the culling for the images. So I want to kind of give her photographs where she looks through it and says what you know what was he even he wasn't even thinking at this point you know there was no idea behind this he was just kind of i guess you know shooting just i mean you don't want to over kind of um think what you're doing you want to be able to kind of shoot freely but at the same time you want to be thinking okay i know sort of the thing that I see potential in this and I kind of know what I'm going to work. And sometimes it comes together and sometimes it doesn't, but that's photography. Mm, no, that's cool. That's, that's cool, man. And, and on that, on that as well, like one of your images I wanted to talk about was that, you know, that kind of, you know, birth to grave capture, you know, the one, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. that reportage that award, one, one that's very synonymous, I think with you. And um, so, yeah. I mean, were you thinking of that kind of theme or that kind of idea at that time when you were, composing and taking that particular image then yeah so essentially um for that particular image i saw the um the the pram and i saw the gravestone and i thought oh that's kind of an unusual mix to kind of you know cradle to the grave kind of thing so i I walked over to take that shot and i was as i was stood there taking it my man just rolled in and kind of parked in between and i thought oh that's even better so it's like that was something that i couldn't have necessarily it was something better than I thought of, you know, but I, I recognized the potential in kind of, I guess, in that sense, in the composition and the idea of the cradle to the grave of just two inanimate objects, essentially. It's very cool, isn't it? I mean, it's so, I mean, so many photographers will be faced with the same kind of p- potential situation, you know, a pram in the church yeah. with a graveyard, I mean, there, and so many would not think of that. I don't think I would think of that. So it's just so interesting how your brain works to think, of a kind of theme for an image like that. It's just, yeah. Every, everybody thinks differently, right? So it's, it's just about um, being open to your ideas and open to the things that you see. Because everybody's capable of it. It's not just like, I see these things and nobody else mm-hmm. can see. It's like everybody can see things. You can see things, everyone can. So it's just, it's just a case of kind of um, being open and shooting things that feel personal to you and or you find interesting or move you in some way. And then if you do that, then the likelihood is other people kind of get what you're doing. Because like, I, I mean, as a photographer, we have kind of have two jobs. One is to observe and find things. And the other thing is then to communicate those observations mm. with using composition. Man, you speak about it so well. You should you should talk at conferences and stuff. I know you do. I know you do. But you do speak about it so well, man. You put your you, your thoughts together so well, so much more eloquently than I can. It's like it's really. Oh, really Alan, cool. you sound fine. I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's great to hear your thoughts behind that image. And if anyone's like listening now, whilst walking or running or doing the dishes or anything, do head to the site thisreportage dot com, and I'll, I'll include that that reportage award that Liam just spoke about there. Um, Matt, you were our very first photographer of the year in 2018. <laughs> That's right, yeah. That's Which is right. awesome. Congrats again for that. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank yeah. you. <laughs> how did that, is, is it bizarre winning something like that? You know, how does that feel winning like an overall kind of photographer of the year and stuff? Yeah, it's like? really cool, you know. It's, it's obviously, you know, it's, it's amazing that other people liked my work, essentially. You know, it's, it's lovely that other photographers looked at it and they connected with the images and they connected with enough that year for to to win it you know that's that's awesome it's a big it's, deal i do and also i mean you were a judge for the first round so you couldn't even enter in the first round well. that's right yeah i mean oh, there's so there's so many great photographers though when you know just looking through people's entries i was like my god so so good mm, yeah, the standard is silly high isn't it oh, it's, it's unbelievable yeah you but man, it is, it is amazing winning that. And, you know, and you and your sister's work really is held in such high esteem by so many photographers. Um, you know, has that had an effect on you? Oh, well, it's true, though, isn't it? But has that had an effect on you at all? You know, for instance, do you, you know, do you feel more pressure when showing your work now that you, you know, you've got such a kind of great 
and rightly so kind of reputation does it has it had any effect on you at all it's just interesting I think. no not at all actually no you're so <laughs> down to earth i don't think about <laughs> it yeah I, I i really don't even give it a i mean a second thought i mean i guess it, it's lovely if people like the work like honestly that's amazing but i don't really it doesn't affect how i'm going to shoot because I, i'm only going i only take photographs of things that i see that interest me and I mm. kind of can't help what I'm taking because they're just the photographs that I see. It's how I see the world. So if people connect with it, then that's brilliant. Um, oh, but yeah, I wouldn't second. I don't second guess anything I've put up there. I just put up pictures that I like. That's cool. That's such a good way to be, dude. It's such a good way to be, isn't it? Because it can be so easy in this in this career to be second guessing yourself, though, as well. And 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 so many people are so hyper aware of what other people are thinking about them or other photographers are thinking about them so i think it's so good just to be the way you are yeah just don't worry about it just just do what you like really you know you, you you've got the responsibility obviously of shooting for the couples and taking pictures that they're going to love too but essentially if you show pictures that you love and they book you on those images then the likelihood is they're going to absolutely love the images even more because they're going to have their loved ones in the photographs so and it's a win-win that's so true that's so true that's so good man no it's cool i've enjoyed this already it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's change tack then liam let's change tack slightly okay <laughs> <laughs> if you weren't a wedding photographer or a photographer mm -hmm. at all what mm -hmm. would you do for a living well i mean now i guess i'd love to work in some capacity in kind of films whatever that would be you know it doesn't not necessarily a filmmaker but something to do with that like like uh, brad pitt body double or something <laughs> no not acting somewhere behind the camera but <laughs> okay. some, something something like that but i guess um before i was a photographer i wanted to be i wanted to work in animation so okay. may, maybe that is the route i would have gone down i guess mm -hmm. like my dream was to work for like pixar or something like that so Oh, yeah, that would be cool, wouldn't it? That would it be would cool. be cool, yeah. <laughs> so maybe, maybe if I'd have really pushed in that direction, then that could have been a, a, a future career. It would have been a different world, man. The wedding photography landscape would be different as well. I, I, somebody would have done the stuff. That, somebody would have taken those shots, you know. They're, they're just, they were out there for someone to take. <laughs> but but you know only you and only us you know each person can only take that specific image really yeah i guess true yeah it's interesting though isn't it how think you know thinking about how things would be different if you just do slightly different things in your life is is interesting yeah i i, I kind of part of me thinks well this is always how it was going to work out you know like you think you're kind of in control but in a way you you're not because you're making decisions that you can't necessarily help but make because it's based on your experiences you know mm. so there's it just i you know i don't know you, this that's a real kind of <laughs> mind-bending thing to think about but yeah. it's a bit isn't it a bit above yeah. uh, <laughs> a, 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 a photography podcast <laughs> yeah, yes <laughs> it's it's like, it's an interesting subject i mean how but like now you know when you started your business with with dom i mean mm -hmm. how, how long ago was it when you started uh it was 2006 so yeah okay. yeah quite, long, quite, long quite a while ago, ago. yeah mm -hmm. well, i mean i wasn't years. actually when i kind of joined we, we bought the studio my intentions wasn't necessarily to be a photographer even it wasn't right. yeah no i was i was kind of i was going to use the studio for other things but then like in the first few weeks we got a um a, like a, a wedding inquiry and Don was like, you know, she shot some weddings when she was very young. And she was like, yeah, sure. Let's let's I mean, she was she was very young at the time as well, actually. <laughs> but uh, she thought, OK, let's do that. And I uh, I just came along the first wedding we did. I just came along, and kind of carried the bags and I like, drove her there. <laughs> right. Just, yeah, just tried to take the stress off. We, we had more kind of equipment back then. So I, was, I just and then on the day I kind of watched what was going on. And because I hadn't really I don't think I attended a wedding before that since I was maybe like a, a young child. So right, okay. I, I, I had preconceived ideas of what weddings were and what wedding photography was. Mm. So I didn't think that there was necessarily anything creative in it. And obviously I was okay. hugely wrong in, in that <laughs> sense. And yeah, and then I thought, oh, you know, I think I, I think I can do this. I think I can come out and help. You know, I, I'd done some photography before, you know, at university and just, you know, just general, just 
not for, not for actually anything paid or anything like that, just for fun. And yeah, I just started, I, I, you know, I come and take some shots along with you. And, uh, and then, you know, here we are, 2020. And, uh, that's mad, isn't it? I bet you had you would have had no idea how it would work out as well, you know, that I you'd be did, shooting yeah. weddings all over the world, winning mm-hmm. awards left, right, and center, and, and you know, teaching other photographers at conferences and things. Isn't I bet you, you just couldn't have an idea that was that, that would happen. It, it wasn't even a goal, mm-hmm. quite honestly. All it was was we need to pay the mortgage. We need to, we've got a more you know, we have, I've got a mortgage, the um, the studio, there was a mortgage on the studio, we have to pay it, let's take on work. And let's do as good a job for the couples that put faith in us. Mm, mad. That's so cool. That's so cool how it's how it's how it's turned out. And what I and mean, when you started shooting together then the weddings and stuff, yeah. did did you start straight straight away shooting in your kind of like, you know, deeply layered kind of street photography inspired kind of way? Or did that evolve over time or? Uh, a little bit of both. So initially, um, the first kind of few weddings that I took, actually, I was, we were um, we were putting some kind of presentation together. And I, I remembered, I looked at some of my compositions recently, and I looked, and I thought, oh, my God, I remember the first picture I took, and it was the same composition, identical to that. So it's kind yeah. of obviously a natural kind of thing that I do. But uh, when yeah. we, um, after like a, maybe half a year or more of shooting a weddings, I, I didn't think that I was necessarily shooting weddings correctly because I thought, okay, this isn't what successful wedding photographers do. They don't shoot like this. So I decided to, um, both, both me and Dom decided to think, okay, we need to, this is, this is how you do wedding photography, looking at, you know, photographer X, this, this person's successful, this is what people want, this is what couples want, so let's try and do that. And we probably, I mean, it must have been like four years or so, of shooting kind of very very differently to what we do now and then oh, it got, right, okay. yeah and then it was like you know I, I can't i can't do this anymore because i was nervous before every wedding because i was mm. trying to take pictures that didn't come naturally to me so i didn't feel totally in control of what was going on so are there some like in, in back in your archives are there like series of like just styled shoots and like portraits heavy, only weddings and stuff yeah heavy portraits oh, um wow. yeah uh, lots of different kind of looks um you know ev- everything you can possibly think of and it's probably a good experience for us actually you know because we it's, it's good to kind of learn different skills and see th- try to see things in a different way so i'd say it was in a, in a way kind of a positive experience for us but Ultimately, I think you've got to, in the end, take pictures that you love and that you connect with. I think that's, you know, you, you can't necessarily be chasing somebody, you know, you don't want to be a photographer that you're not. Oh, that's so important, isn't it? It's so important. Yeah. And that means then we all have our own unique styles. And then, yeah, as you said before, Absolutely. Show, yeah, showing yeah. what you love. And then the clients are going to be mega happy because then they're in the images and their loved ones, as you say, exactly. in the style yeah. that they've loved. So and it brings a variety to the industry, which can only be a positive thing. I mean, there is a lot more than there was. You know, the, the, uh, every year I'm amazed by the standard going up. And it's mm-hmm. brilliant seeing new people coming into the industry and bringing new ideas. Like, I, one of the, my favorite thing about doing like, you know, conferences is, you meet new photographers and they're like, for me, for me, they're just as inspiring as like somebody who's been in the industry for ages and is just already like incredible, you know? Well, that's cool, man. That's such a great way again of looking at it because, you know, some, a lot, some photographers get annoyed at people coming into the industry, you know, maybe taking their business or, right. no, you know, I love it. you know, that's bring, really cool. get everyone for anyone who wants to come in and I guess, be creative then i would massively encourage that i think that it's a great job it's a great industry and uh you know you, it's amazing for anyone to come in so more than merrier totally for me agree. totally agree totally agree man and and you mentioned about talking at conferences there i've seen you speak at a couple and you're always so good man so good both you and dom and also though you never neither of you ever appear nervous like even beforehand or during it how, how do you do it how do you do it I was very nervous before the first one I ever did, which was... What, um, what was, was the keep, first one? It, it was Keep It Real in Berlin, Germany. Oh, um, wow, doing I, it in... Did you do it in German? No, no. <laughs> no. 
I know, I didn't do it, Joe. I don't speak German, but <laughs> they, I mean, they all spoke amazing English, so mm. incredible English. Better English than me, to be honest, but it was <laughs> so absolute, absolutely fantastic. But it, it was, there was a lot of people there and it was in a, um, it was in an old theatre and like that was quite intimidating. Um, right. But it, it was, you know, I got through it and when I got through it, I was like, oh, you know what? It wasn't as, as bad as I thought it would be. And since then I've been fine. Man, yeah, it was so good. And you two are so professional when you're speaking um, things as well. So professional. It's like proper though. slick. It's, it is, though. It's proper <laughs> slick, man. It's so good. <laughs> um, in, in general, Liam, what, what, does, what does success mean to you? You know, what does it mean to be mm. successful to you? To be happy. Oh, yeah, I love that answer. It's so true, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's just it's just happiness. I mean, I think you can. People might think, oh, you know, if I, I win this award, or if I shoot that wedding, or if I, uh, you know, work for a company, or what if I go on holiday here, or have this much money, or live in this bigger house. I'll get, but really, you know, none of those things necessarily bring you happiness. So, you know, happiness like comes comes from within. I mean, that's why for me, shooting weddings in a way I want to shoot them makes me happy because like I'm fully engaged when I'm at the wedding in what's going on and therefore I'm just in my element and loving it so like you know weddings like we spend a lot of time doing them not this year but previous years you know usually and hopefully next year you know we spend a lot of time doing it and like it's our lives you know these are our memories too so it's important to like respect yourself as well and you know not just waste your time doing things that you don't believe in oh it's so true that's just great yeah life advice as well isn't it it really really is totally believe in that um i asked dom this when i interviewed her for the podcast mm-hmm. as well i'd love to hear your take on it too okay. um but <laughs> what what is it like being in a business um with a sibling you know and do you guys really never fight do you not at all no we never we never i mean i'm not necessarily we're quite laid back so there's not necessarily, and we're we're kind of similar as well. We like the same kind of things. So have you always been like that growing up as well, though? Did you never like fight yeah. as kids or anything? Yeah. No, not really. Um, I mean, no, I can't think of any, I can't think of any major fight we've had. I mean, there's been times where we've been closer and less close, you know. Which I don't know if you have siblings, but yeah. you can. Um, like I've got, we've got Alex as well, who works in the business. And like there was times when I was growing up where I was very close to him or Dom, you know, depending on kind of age range, you know, because sometimes he's the youngest, but sometimes like we could be into say computer games or something, or then, you know, you get a bit older and you, I don't know, your interests change. So, and sometimes they were very close, but yeah, we never, they, actually they used to fight thinking about it over the TV remote, who's going to watch what cartoon, but I was a bit older, so I was okay with it. I, I just take the remote <laughs> and put it on. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny and do you always kind of agree with each other like now you know in in, in you know things like business decisions where you know or shooting decisions on the day are you, do you never disagree on things no uh, well I guess uh, we used to really discuss what we liked about photography and what we wanted to kind of you know focus on and how we wanted to sh- what kind of decisions we wanted to make stylistically so they were kind of decisions that we kind of made together just because, you know, we could have completely gone different ways as artists, you know, and she have two different kind of styles, which actually would have been, you know, interesting to see if, mm, if we'd had true. someone who's been really into portraits and someone documentary, it would have been, that would have been kind of a nice combo as well, you know, mm, but that's true. it would have been a very different business. But no, I mean, sometimes somebody will say, you know, oh, I took this picture uh, you know, I, I like this more than the other person. But if we're disagreeing on it, it means that the picture's not really that good, to be honest. <laughs> That's a good way of looking at it as well. <laughs> oh, no, I, I think it's so cool, man. I just, yeah, I have, I have lots of sisters. I, I can't mm-hmm. imagine being in, in, I can't imagine being in business with with any of them. <laughs> I love, <laughs> I love them, but I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> well, it, it's good that you know it, we, what you really need is a level of trust, right? Mm-hmm. If you're working or in any relationship, to be honest, you know whether that be you know family or it be like a working relationship whatever you want to be able to trust people so if you can trust them you know they've got your back you can rely upon them then you know you're going to be okay so it's good and it must be so it must be so lovely now you must have done so many weddings together you must just kind of intrinsically know where kind of each other's going to be or what kind of images you're taking and yeah you just need to look it just needs a look that's why you know we can both give each other a look and we know what's going on 
That's very cool, man. Do you have like the same um, meal at McDonald's on the drive home as well? Or? <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I think we do actually, but it's not <laughs> yeah. every time. But yeah, we do. Yeah. It's, what, um, what is we, that, Liam? What do you What do you have? Quarter pounder tends to be the kind of meal of choice that will go on. Um, nice. But it depends. Sometimes you know, it could be anything, Big Mac, whatever you know. Well, no, it's all. Oh, I'm making me hungry, man. <laughs> 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 you know, I've only I've only shot two weddings this year, so I've only had two post wedding McDonald's. It's so oh, bad. My yeah. God, you, you must be all skin and bones. <laughs> Do you know what? I thought that would be a good side of it, but it hasn't had any effect on me that way. <laughs> Your body just doesn't, you just take some McDonald's now. It's like you're drinking water or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe it does. It's true. <laughs> um, Liam, you, want, you were one of our judges for our very first collection, as I mentioned earlier. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks again for that, man. It's awesome. It's the, you, know, you had trust in, in me and TIR before it even existed. So thank you for that. Um, and you've judged loads of other photography awards too. What, mm -hmm. you know, what are you specifically looking for? when judging you know you know what what appeals to you is this kind of any tips that people are submitting oh man there's there's so many things really i mean I, I love it when i see a photograph that has like a real originality of thought something that i've never seen before and you can really kind of you think oh my god that i've never i you know i've looked through a lot of wedding images and i've never seen anything like that before or nobody's had that you know that you know the world that always blows me away if you if you can see anything that reveals something about the photographer, I love that. I love images that are humorous, but that's just me. And you know, it, obviously, pictures want to have like if it, if it has a great moment or composition or the light's beautiful. I mean, all the better. But yeah, I mean, anything that's anything that just feels like something I've not seen necessarily before, then I, you know, I'm I'm always really <laughs> really drawn to those kind of images. That's cool. It is so important, that originality, though, isn't it? It is so important. Um, and what's more important to you? You always hear about these three things. What's more important to you, composition, light, or moment? Well, I mean, they're all equally capable of ruining pictures as they are of making them. <laughs> that's, I've never heard that. So that's a really good way of saying it. Yeah. I, I guess it depends what your intentions are when you're, when you're taking the photograph. I mean, it's difficult to, I mean, light is a bit different, but I, I mean, obviously there needs to be some light, but I guess we're talking about kind of complex, kind of more interesting light. And mm -hmm. I guess there's, you can shoot for light, you can shoot for composition, complex composition, you can shoot for complex moments. Um, I think if it doesn't have, whatever you're shooting, if the composition isn't right, then you're not necessarily going to understand what it is that the person's seeing because the, the communication of the photograph will fall apart. But equally, if it's just a good composition, but there's nothing in there that means anything and has no kind of moment of any significance, then the composition is just nothing. So mm. I guess it's almost like a trick question. <laughs> um, I, think, I think you at least need some form of moment and, some, and a composition that is at least serves the purpose of what it is that your observation is. So mm. I'd say those two, but of course, equally, if there's no light at all, then there is not enough picture. <laughs> That's so interesting, Matt. It's, it's kind of a long way of skirting around and not giving an actual <laughs> winner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going moments. That's final answer. <laughs> <laughs> no i love that it's all so true what you're saying and so interesting man it's so interesting um to so people who may be interested in, in the technical because I, I don't often ask many technical stuff about shooting because i'm mm -hmm. for me personally i guess it's a side that i'm kind of less interested in so i probably ask mm -hmm. less about it but likewise, actually yeah likewise yeah it's true isn't it but people might be interesting you know so do, do, i mean do you have a favorite lens or a favorite focal length uh, yeah, so it would be the um, the twenty three that's on the um, the X Pro series on on Fuji, which is um, the an equivalent of a thirty five. Uh, okay, cool, cool. Is that you shoot like a high percentage of your shots of that then? I would say uh, eighty percent or above during the day. It's taken okay. on that lens. Has it always been like that, or is that again? Is that um, something that's changed? Or I'd say yes, it's been like that. Certainly in the past 10 years i okay, I, I guess at, at first maybe i shot more on the 50 because there was less for me to worry about in the image mm. you know to deal with and kind of understanding 
distance and like height, which are like the some of the understanding how close to get at the moment, you know, and what's comfortable. That's um, that you know that takes experience and kind of just shooting a lot essentially to kind of understand those things. So mm. I guess once I understand that and I, I came comfortable with using a, a slightly wider lens and knowing where to kind of position myself quickly to get pictures, then. Yeah, I think that that lens became my favorite. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's, inter- it's interesting as well, though. It's good to know. It's, it's interesting. <laughs> is that, um, is that I, the most popular? Is, is 35 the most popular? I don't know. Or is, is 50? I, I, I'm not sure. Well, I think maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe 35, yeah. You shoot, is it, you shoot on the, uh, you shoot even wider, don't you? So it's like I a 23 do. or something. Yeah, 24, 25, yeah. yeah. 24, 24, yeah. Yeah, I do love that. But that's just, I think part of that is that I started very early on shooting like that. So then when I tried 35, I felt like I was just a little bit too far away. Just I yeah. think because I was being at 24, so ingrained in me, you know, that's why. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think everyone has kind of a, a lens that they go to that is just they feel comfortable with. It's like they, they understand the distance they need to be at to get the photograph. Mm, that's true isn't it it's true what is your background by the way anyway because i mean again i know i said before you speak so eloquently about photography and stuff did you study photography or anything or uh, what it was, is- it, yeah it was part of my course I, I, I did a kind of a multimedia kind of degree where it was photography animation um it was illustration um uh, okay. like yeah working a bit in websites as well and graphic design so it's kind of a bit of everything because i wasn't i, I mean i love the creative process but at that time I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do I just knew that I wanted to work in something like that but you know it's it's hard when you're younger to kind of necessarily know exactly what career you want to have you know you've got so little life experience at that point Mm, definitely Uh, you know it's not always obvious what job or what careers that you know so there's so much pressure to be like okay let's have a job let's 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 get going in an industry but you know so difficult when you're young Oh, it is, isn't it, man? Yeah, God, I wanted. I went through stages of. I wanted to be a barrister for a while. I got a good surname for that. I did have a good. Wow. Surname. Yes, you do. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, I wanted to be an author for a while as well, and um, wow, really? Mm, that would still be cool. I've written thirty thousand words of a novel, but it's a uh, very. Have you? Yeah, but it was about 10 years ago and I did that. I should revisit it, shouldn't I? I should yeah, it. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Now's the time. Come on. That is true. That's, isn't it? That's true. Yeah. Let's get this finished. <laughs> oh, that'd be interesting. I bet the right. I haven't read it now in, as I say, years. I bet the writing is so bad, man. But it would be fun. It'd be fun. Yeah. Um, okay, a rock and a hard uh, place question, uh, Liam. Mm-hmm. If you could never take a photograph again for the rest of your life, Mm-hmm. Or you could never listen to music again for the rest of your life. Which would you choose? Oh my god, <laughs> so difficult. That is it because I love both so much. Um, what kind of music do you like? Oh, I I have a very wide taste in music. Yeah, so oh. pretty much pretty this every decade. This stuff I love from it. So I, I really an eclectic taste in music. But um. Oh, that's- yeah, I'd find, it, I'd find it very difficult to give that up. But at the same time, I make money from taking photographs. That's true. <laughs> so I think ultimately I'm going to have to go with that. But my life will be a lot less enjoyable having no music. Because oh, I guess yeah. music and, um, and photographs share the ability to kind of like, um, like time travel almost, like take you back to moments, you know, bring you back places. So, you know, you can look at a photograph or listen to a song. You can instantly be back in a certain place in your life. So it'd be, I think it'd be hard to give up either. But yeah, I, you know, it'd have to be music, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry that is a random question but that's it's really interesting and as you say but yeah it, it does transport to you doesn't it like time travel and that's mm-hmm. links to a question that i sometimes ask if you liam if you mm-hmm. could choose to travel in time to any time in the past or any time in the future what where would you go what what time i would uh i would go and i go back in time and probably see my grandparents again oh. i think yeah Oh, you know, because you know, when you're younger, you don't necessarily appreciate them. Mm, do you know what I mean? And you, you're true. just so young, so you don't necessarily like they're there, and but you don't necessarily get to know them. 
you know it's all when you're that young you kind of it's about yourself you know so Um, yeah i'd say i would do that i'd I'd, I'd love to talk to them again that's so true that's so lovely man um yeah i didn't i mean i didn't kind of really know any of mine i i was my parents were quite old when they had me so my grandparents all died when i was very young it would be lovely um and my my grandfather had the same name as me you know i'm his namesake alan law oh, wow, so it really? be, yeah it would be lovely to um to go and actually meet meet them really properly because yeah. i think he died yeah. when i was about four you know so i have like no memories no no anyway okay that's a bit of sad sad yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. but but talking about like parents and family and stuff your parents must be so proud of of you guys in a business together it must feel it must be wonderful for them to know that uh, yeah I'm, I'm sure i mean they don't they, they don't really talk necessarily about it but yeah i can tell they're proud yeah i, yeah. I mean they're uh, the they're great people. I have great parents. I'm very, very lucky in my life to have them. Um, like and Dom has great parents too. She does. Yeah, she does. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure they're as keen on her, but. <laughs> <laughs> but were they? Were they kind of like you know when you started being in business together, you and Dom? Were they? Yeah. Were they surprised? Did it take them by surprise, or or not? Or? Um, you know, I'm not sure. I, I think probably a little bit. I mean, I was. I think we were both. Everyone was surprised. I think, <laughs> you know, it it wasn't like a, a long plan. It was an opportunity that came came up, and we was like, okay, shall we do this? And it, and it seemed like a good thing. It seemed like a good idea, you know. Well, and it's, it's worked out, right? But <laughs> but mm. it, it just instinctually, I thought, oh, I, I think this can work. I think it can work. That's cool. It's good to go with the instincts, and that was a good call, man. It was a good call. Mm, yeah. It's but I, I think I'm just, you know, I've got a son and a daughter um, mm-hmm. and I would, I would love that thought of them in, you know, in like 15, 20 years time, them two being in business together. I think it's, it's just a very romantic way it's, to think of life, really. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's great to um, like, because say we didn't work together. How, I mean, how often would we actually see each other? Mm, Probably yeah. not very often. Quite honestly, yeah. like if I, if I think about my cousins or people like that, I, I don't see them that often. So, you know, that would that'll be a sad situation, you know? Yeah, totally. I mean, because you, you, li- you live a bit far from each other, don't you, physically? An, an hour and a half, yeah. So yeah, quite, quite yeah. a distance, yeah. It is. How often, so say a normal wedding year, you're seeing mm-hmm. your sister, though, what, oh, I don't know, 100 times a year or so? Or? Uh, so we, we don't do any more than 25 weddings a year. So it would be 25 weddings. And then whatever kind of speaking stuff, but we even if we don't see each other, like you know, be in the same place at the same time, we'll talk to each other almost every day. You know, just wow. to FaceTime and just because you've got to talk about work. You know, there's always something going on. So there's yeah. kind of during the day there'll be some there'll be some meeting that takes place at some time that, for something that's cropped up that needs discussing. That's cool, though. I mean, I mean, I talk to my sisters probably about once a year or something. It's really mm-hmm. bad, isn't it? But <laughs> yeah, I think that's n- normal, you know. And you'd probably be like, you know, probably be something similar to that with Dom. I'm not sure necessarily once a year, but you know, once maybe a month, you know. Yeah, and that is that would be sad, wouldn't it? I, oh, I need yeah. to do it more, man. I need to do it more. Yeah, I need on, to give them a ring. You know? <laughs> Don't let them have to listen to this podcast to hear your voice. Come on. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Um, but you've shot loads of weddings for fellow wedding photographers. Do you, you know, yeah. do you enjoy shooting for wedding photographers? Do you feel extra it, pressure? Yeah. You like it, yeah. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, because well, one, they, you know, they get you. Two, mm. they have shot weddings, so they know the issues and problems that you might have. So they can, mm. you know, they kind of try and try and get around them for you and see pro- issues ahead. Um, they always give you a great meal as well. <laughs> that's a bonus. That's yeah, yeah, that's that's always amazing. Um, do you not get extra nervous or anything? I mean, do you get nervous at all now shooting weddings or not? No, no. I, I, I look oh, forward man, to Man, that's so cool. Yeah, and there's no, there's no nerves for... Uh, no, nothing like that. It's just it, I'm excited to shoot a wedding, always. Um, I, you, I, like I said before, I, I was. I used to be very nervous, but not, not anymore. I and mean, that was when you were kind of shooting in not your kind not of the, the way you wanted to now issue. no exactly so i felt uncomfortable a little bit it was you know and i felt like oh can i am i going to be able to produce the results today that i need to do 
you know, how am I going to be able to deal with these kind of problems where now I don't necessarily have to think about it in those kind of terms. And that makes uh, sense that the nerves would, yeah, because now you know you're just going to turn up, you're going to shoot it how you see it, the only way you can kind of do it. And and, and then it makes sense yeah. not to be nervous, really. But when yeah. but I feel like I go to weddings and I shoot, you know, in, in the way I the only way I can. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah, trying absolutely. to imitate. So why are you nervous? <laughs> I don't know, man. Why what, am I? What are you nervous about? Is it? Do you have oh. nerves during the day, or is it just like beforehand meeting the bride? It's just bride beforehand. Thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. Beforehand. Well, that's yeah. That's kind of that is a bit different. But the same. I mean, I guess like I'm an introvert as well really I'm, I'm more introverted definitely so I, I definitely like before meeting the bride or meeting the groom yeah, I can get a little bit nervous sometimes but I think it's really like it's not as bad anymore it's only so many times you can knock on the door and say hello I, you know, I'm the wedding photographer this is how I'm going to be shooting to blah 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 you know there's, there's only so many times you can do that before you don't you stop being nervous I think what is that? What's the number? What's that number? Because I shot like 300 <laughs> weddings. I'd still get it, man. <laughs> 301, I think. <laughs> Next time you're not going to know. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold that to you. I'm going like, yeah, to hold. <laughs> um, and what are you like, you know, just because you mentioned about that cold, that kind of time in the morning when you go in and you meet the bride or the groom or see them. Are you, are you after you've said hello and stuff, are you kind of very, very quiet throughout the rest of the day? Or are you a photographer who like talks to the, the bridal party and the people around? you and stuff out what's your approach well in general super quiet so i'm i'm just i'm really kind of um not saying i'm just thinking and going from moment to moment shot to shot trying to t trying to get photographs but in the morning when i arrive that can be slightly different because not necessarily like the bride and groom you may have spoken to them or met them or whatever but you, the the other guests don't necessarily know you or what you do so, you know, I, sometimes it's needed that I need to kind of talk and chit chat to them in the morning just to get them to kind of know me and feel comfortable around me. So that sometimes I do that. Sometimes I have to like say nothing. Sometimes I get and take a lot of pictures then get close and kind of get them used to that. And sometimes I don't take it almost any for like 20 minutes. So it really depends. I try and read what they need from me to make right. my life easier for the rest of the day. Uh, that's great advice as well because yeah just kind of reading the room reading the situation and changing the way that you yeah that you kind do of it as yeah well. you are for them because you, you, you're there for them you know they you want to take great stuff and you want them to you want to be like get on with them and them not to feel like oh there's the photographer you want them to mm. kind of know your name and just be comfortable around you so yeah mm. there's, there's a bit of that well, that's cool man that's great advice as well for, for people listening to for about that specific thing yeah i sometimes as well i've never sometimes i've not met them so when you go into that situation it's like you know hello sarah and then sometimes yes. though, the bridesmaid will say hello and it's her name's not even sarah or something it's like yes. <laughs> <laughs> and i never know about that kind of whether i'm going to be like shaking hands or like doing a hug or doing a little double kiss thing i think i get nervous about that and then yes easy easy things to yeah those social things easy to not know yeah. what to do i think i do just suffer a bit of social anxiety but i think it's so common though isn't it it's oh yeah I, I think most people have it in some form Mm, definitely like a drink at conferences and stuff or like a little drink beforehand definitely helps but i can't do that at like 10 a.m in the morning no, uh, no. A wedding. <laughs> no not necessarily ideal no do you imagine if you turned up being like you're reeking of like whiskey <laughs> <That'd be good. laughs> <That'd be good. laughs> um i i recently spoke to uh the fab family photographer alice chapman for the podcast and oh yeah yeah yeah, we talked about how you recently did a family shoot for her. It was a small that's, world. That's isn't it? Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> what was that like? Did you enjoy it? You know, um, yeah, I loved do it. You, do you shoot families the same way as you shoot weddings? Completely the same way. Yeah, same approach, same as, as similar as possible. And we, we've kind of done families for as long as we've done kind of weddings, shooting weddings. Oh, really? Uh, well, I didn't yeah, know that. It, just, it was, in fact, we used to shoot way more family and less wedding and then it slowly kind of crossed over i mean i kind of i it, i guess i preferred the weddings because you can kind of get booked in advance like years in advance so you kind of know where you are financially like going mm. forward you can yeah. kind of project where you are mm. um but like i i love doing the family shoots it's, and yeah I've do, we've done a few this year and um yeah shoot 
shooting the um, Alice Chapman one was amazing. She's absolutely lovely. What a lovely family she has as well. So oh, really? That's cool. Yeah, she. I, I've never met her, but she was lovely on the podcast. Really lovely. Oh yeah, she's, she's great. great. She's really great. She's a great photographer as well. Yeah, really good, really good. And um, yeah, she was um, obviously glowing about you two shooting her family. Oh, that's and, nice. Yeah, loved the images, and obviously, and she said it was a great experience as well. And to be, and to be watching you, I think you've like persuaded her to go mirrorless because she said she was watching you, and you, you know, you weren't having to lie on the floor like she is and stuff. Uh, no, so. I almost, I yeah, I, I always, I, I rarely kind of. Um, yeah, like sit on the floor or anything. Sometimes you have to, if it's the speeches or something, you've got to kind of kneel down. But I generally kind of will stoop a little bit yeah. and kind of, yeah, because I'm trying to be able to kind of move in the moment. So right, if you kind okay. of like sat or you can position yourself where you, you've got like limited movement, you can't, the composition can be off. So I'm trying to be kind of flexible, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess I think that's something I've not really thought of before as well, actually. Yeah, you can get yourself into some positions that are a lot more kind of static and harder to move from. Mm. Yeah. And, and, you know, often people are not, they're moving around, you know, especially if it's kids, they're all over the place. So, mm, yeah, that's true. Do you like kids at weddings? Love. Absolutely love. Yeah. Because, yeah. uh, you know, they bring a lot of spontaneity and a lot of fun and, I've got, you know, the different heights as well, which is great for kind of light layering images and stuff like that. Well, that's true. I get not thought of that about that. <laughs> <laughs> the whole layering thing, obviously, you're so known for that. Um, and the street photography thing. Like, mm. what came, did you, were you shooting street photography stuff before doing weddings and families? Uh, yes. So, um, okay. street photography um, came about because uh, my partner, Leanne, she's, um, she's a geophysicist. So, she goes to different conferences around the world, science conferences. And uh, I would go with her on trips because we'd go to a cool city and it'd be, I'd have a free hotel and oh, she'd go to the conference during the day and I would just think, okay, I've got a city to explore here. And I just took my camera and started shooting That's and cool. not with a necessary an idea of like, oh, I'm going to take cool pictures to, to be a street photographer or anything like that. It was just for fun. And then we put some of the pictures on our, our blog, you know, showed them to Dom and she was like, you know, these aren't terrible. <laughs> so, put them on and then people started like inquiring over those images and oh, yeah. it was like oh okay so they like these images as much if not more than the wedding photographs like they're connecting with these what you know what are we doing different in these images that they're connecting with over the wedding images so it's like okay let's let's try and bring some of that to our wedding photographs you know as well let's shoot things that we find interesting more more of that at weddings and let's see if that's, that's possible. Quite, that's quite a light bulb moment, really, isn't it? Then in your in your guys in in your career, yeah. really. Yeah, it, it didn't feel it to be honest at the time, but looking back, it was. You know, it, it, mm. like it, I think it was Steve Jobs who said something like, "You can't it's, you can't connect the dots going forward, but you can backwards." You know. Okay, and that's, that's kind of how it feels. You know, I, I can see the pattern now, but at the time, it was like. It wasn't like I just stood up and went, from now we will be shooting weddings in a street photography style. <laughs> like, it just didn't happen, you know. Be right, cool yeah. It did, but it didn't. It was just like, oh, maybe, maybe we should do a bit more. Let's see if it's possible and just explore that kind of idea. Oh, that then, was a yeah. good, good path to go down. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been, yeah, it's brought a lot of happiness. So, yeah. Do you still do um, street stuff now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say um, less this year. For obvious mm. reasons, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, in, in previous years, quite a lot. I've still gone out a little bit and shot this year, just around Newcastle. Um, That's cool. But, you know, I've never been to Newcastle. Sorry, just put that in there. Never been. No, it's it's a, <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful city. It's absolutely, it's a great yeah. place to live. Yeah, lots of it's lively, lots of great bars and restaurants, and yes. Yeah, uh, That's cool. I love the Geordie accent as well. I love it. M me too. Yeah, I love it too. Although Is sometimes, so why? How have you ended up in Newcastle? Uh, okay, so um, Leanne uh, originally is from there. Um, well, oh, okay. she's from Nor Northumbria, so um, a little north of, of Newcastle. But um, okay. she basically works at Northumbria University. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, it doesn't really matter where I live. I mean, obviously, Newcastle yeah. is a little bit extreme, like, like the same situation that you have there where, you know, you have to sometimes drive a little bit further. But That's true. essentially, it's, it's not, you know... No, it's not too much of a problem because as long as you're not doing like maybe 50 weddings a year, that that would be an issue. But 25, yeah. it's, it's, not, it's not too bad. That's manageable, isn't it? It yeah, is manageable, yeah. 
Have you ever shot down in Cornwall? Yeah, we, I think uh, uh, we must have shot in every single county in the country at some point. That's cool, isn't it? That is cool. Yeah, oh, it's great. You get to go to places that you'd never go and see places you'd never see. It's just yeah. it's, it's awesome in that sense. It I've is, kind of really it? missed that this year. Yeah, um, that's, yeah I agree. Mm, I, I mean, agree. I, I think it was... The positive is, I think, you know, I've not had a weekend's free in the summer since 2004. Five, <laughs> so that that's that's a long time, a long, a long time. <laughs> you know, so in in a way, I think it was nice to have like that break and see what it was like to experience a summer, a weekends at home, which was you know it was a lot of fun. So I mm. I enjoyed it in that sense. Um, but at, at the same time, I always think, well, we've only got so many kind of. I, I always think of a wedding season or wedding year as like one like go. It's like one attempt to at creating something really cool that year. So the weddings are just they're all part of a kind of big kind of thing that happens that year catalog. So I mean, th- this year there's less. So it's you know mm. a lot of opportunities lost. But you know that's true. Next, next year time. though. Yeah, next year. Let's 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 go. I'm all I'm all fired up for next year. Let's go go go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still supposed to I'm I, my last wedding of the year is December the 5th which is supposed to be like uh, three days or is it the fourth I can't remember, t- three days or two days after this lockdown is supposed to end but mm-hmm. hopefully uh, it will let's, let's just, I mean it's difficult yeah. to plan at the moment but hopefully I'm I'm I'm, I'm feeling somewhat hopeful <laughs> okay i'm gonna i'm gonna go with you as well i'm gonna, I'm gonna be hopeful as well. um liam what do you find the most challenging aspect of being a photographer to be whether that's like shooting wise or business wise what's the most challenging part of it all mm, uh, probably the um the thing i probably l- least like is the like finding the venues in the morning and that kind of finding a parking space. Oh, that's you know, true. That's stressful, isn't it? Yeah, that kind of thing. I, I'm less keen on. Um, the, scar- as, uh, the scariest words in the English language are, you have reached your destination. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you hear that and you look out and like you just <laughs> feel. Yeah, it's like, oh, awful. I, I try to plan it like a military operation where I'm on Google Maps and looking at like street view and looking at buildings, trying to find, see the numbers on a house or whatever. Or not, That's you know. good to do that. Uh, yeah, just to try and take away some of that stress because, well, yeah, you're right. When the sat nav says you've arrived at your location and you look around and there's nothing, that is a. Um, yeah, not it's not the most fun moment, is it? <laughs> yeah, no, I've never. Luckily, I've never turned up at the wrong church. I photographed a, a family um, coming into the wrong church. They, they came out again afterwards saying that they got to the wrong wedding. But yeah, <laughs> what about um, the business side for you? Because obviously you guys are known as a, such, you know, extraordinary photographers. But do you mm. enjoy the business side of, of this all as well? Yeah, I've, I've, I've kind of grown to enjoy it. I wouldn't say I love it like I do shooting, but I, yeah, I, I've, I've got to a point where I'm kind of comfortable with it. I mean, I I think if I was on my own, I'd really struggle. But like Dom's so kind of on it with like social media and things like that. And she's so good at it that I... Oh, uh, that's cool. Yeah. Does she do of, more of the social media side then? I, I'm way more. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Way, way <laughs> that's, I, cool. I, that's my huge weakness, I'd say. Social media, I'm poor, really poor at it. Right. But that's also, as you say, it's such another good thing of being in a duo like that. So you can just play with each other's strengths, you know. Yes, I mean she's very. Um, you can you can set Dom a task, and however mind-numbingly boring it is, she'll just complete it. Fine, no problems. Where that's sometimes cool. I'm like, oh my god, and it becomes an effort. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I get that. Um, Liam, what advice, if any? Would you give to people who have been, you know, shooting for years, quite a long time, um, but maybe they're just not that happy with their work or not that happy with where they currently are in their career or just feel a bit stagnant? Mm. You know, would you have any thoughts or tips on for them? Well, I think firstly, that's this is just, you know, be okay about it. This is part of the, like, the creative process. Everybody goes through it and you're going to go through it repeatedly. So don't like stress yourself about this kind of situation you know i've been through this multiple times going feeling like creatively i've um, kind of stagnated in some way this is just like what you've got to go through 
to kind of move on and just be patient and understand that this is just a moment in time that you're going to go through and not to worry too much about it. Mm. I would say things you will improve if you, if you are determined to, and it's important enough to you, then you naturally, you will actually get better and you'll find ways out of kind of maybe getting stuck in your career in some way. But in terms of like shooting, I mean, it depends. I mean, like I said before, I mean, try and try to shoot in a way that you're happy because then you're, if you're happy shooting on a wedding day, then you'll take pictures that you're happy with as well, you know, ultimately. That's and so true. I guess try and shoot with intent on the wedding day. So understand what your intentions are and what you want to achieve and just be very, as clear as possible in your mind about that. And then you'll kind of find your kind of photographic identity in some way, but then that will just mm. come in time that's that's all good advice man yeah have you ever fa- have you ever personally hit a kind of wall like a kind of creativity kind of wall because you've been doing this quite as you say mm-hmm. quite a long time now about 14 years has there come a point where you've yeah. you know you've every, really, all the time. Yeah. every few years in fact yeah i feel like i wonder if I, I think is this it you know is this i um have i have i found have i run out of stuff to, different takes of where i can do this but something always because you change you evolve you know i'm not the same person as i was a few years ago or you know mm-hmm. a few years before that and like life will bring inspiration to you at some point as you change as a person you'll see new things like i i see things that now at weddings that i couldn't see like a few years ago i just didn't notice them and you can't shoot what you can't see so mm-hmm. i guess yeah you just need to just understand that this is just a process that everybody goes through Mm, great advice and i think it's exciting what you say there about how we change as people and then we kind of see things different things and different things inspire us and that's exciting to think about the future and then yeah, it's just like limitless possibilities really and you just don't know what's going to happen i know mm. but in a positive sense but, but <laughs> yeah. you're, you're such a positive person man as well which is so awesome um but is, is there anything are you afraid of, you know what are you what are you afraid of do you is there anything you're afraid of do you mean afraid in the sense of a frightening situation or do you mean afraid like keeping you up at night kind of stuff either or both would be both interesting so okay, either so <laughs> <laughs> a frightening situation like i wouldn't like to be swim, swimming in a river with crocodiles or in a, in the sea with sharks that would pretty much that would, I am, yeah that I would not be good no that i wouldn't enjoy that <laughs> Um, no, don't be. <laughs> fearful in life I mean I wouldn't say anything is particularly keeping me up at night but mm. like I guess just the fact I guess time and like how it how it disappears and like the just the knowledge that we've got limited like time to do things just in life that is depressing <laughs> yeah. no yeah it is depressing but I try not to think about it but yeah I guess you know the, the that kind of thing that is true. That is, I, I don't really think about that, but now I'm going to think about that a lot now. And <laughs> at the same time, I try and spin it to be a positive. So this isn't like, this isn't a rehearsal. This is life. This is it. Like, let's make the best of it. Let's be positive. Let's enjoy it while we can. That's so true. I, I, yeah, when I've thought about it in the past as well, I, I totally agree with, with you in that way. Like, if if we were immortal or something, there'd just be hardly any enjoyment in life. There'd be almost no point of it, you know. Yeah. Um, um, that's the same with everything in life, though. You've got, you've got to have, like, bad moments to appreciate the good moments. Mm, that's true, isn't it? Mm. And this has been, well, this has been a, a not good year. So I think any year going forward is going to be better as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, but, you know, maybe like in a few years, you, everyone will be so busy. They'll think, well, you remember 2020 when we got to stay at home and like, you know, That's eat ice true. cream. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> then. That's true. Soon, you know? What's your favorite ice cream? Mm, I guess uh, I am partial to like a 99 on when I'm at the coast, you know, just. That is good, isn't it? Yeah. And they add about two quid on just to have a flake in Some, it, though, really. Yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I, I love um, Ben and Jerry's uh, peanut butter cup. Um, oh, that so is good. a very good choice. I am also a big fan of Ben and Jerry's. In, in many <laughs> or in fish food. Fish food. Ooh. Yes, fish food is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man I got, this has gone on so quickly um i've already kept you like over an hour man so i'm gonna I, i'm just oh, gonna, really? gonna 
Yeah, I know, mad, isn't it? It's mental. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to ask you one last question now. Um, mm -hmm. And I've got to ask you, because you were our original, obviously, uh, photographer of the year. So what would be your top tips to help someone become better at the documentary side of what we do? Hmm. I guess um, don't look for any preconceived ideas of moments when you're shooting. Um, take things that are interesting to you. Um, don't enter awards that uh, you uh, you don't you know pictures that you don't really love because if you do win for them you get known for them. So I think it's important to just make sure that you enter stuff that you love. That's uh, true. For the story side of kind of awards, I'd say make sure you have a strong first image because that makes the first impression for people right. who are judging it. Um, obviously like try and make it strong all the way through but like strong first impressions go a long way I think mm -hmm, that's true uh, and just I guess bring consistency to what you're doing mm -hmm. all great tips then all great tips oh dude I, I, I absolutely love talking to you I thank oh, it's you been so fun. much no absolutely my pleasure I've had a great time Oh man, really enjoyed it. You're so you're such a star. You're so humble as well, and you just in so open and just so always so fun to talk to. You always just make me smile talking to you. Oh, likewise, Alan. Well. Likewise. Oh man. Um. So, anyone, if, if you've been listening whilst doing the pots or, or walking, I always say the same things like doing the pots or walking the dogs. I'm sure there's lots of other situations where people are listening to podcasts <laughs> in the car. In the car, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one. Um, so if you've been doing that, though, do head to thisreportage.com and um, I'll include that reportage award that Liam spoke about and obviously links through to your site as well. And, and man, hopefully, um, obviously there's no TIR Christmas party this year, but hopefully I'll get to see you in the flesh at some point. Don't know when no that will be. No doubt, yeah. Last time was March. It's just before lockdown happened, though, wasn't it? Because I saw you uh, at Elevate in at March. Elevate, yeah, that's right, yeah. we were, It was kind of, yeah, we knew it was coming at that stage. Mm. And uh, we're not necessarily, it's been so long, but here we are. Mad. It feels like a lifetime ago, though. It does. It really, it really does, yeah. It really does. So much has changed. Oh, man, but I'm going to be positive like you, and it's all going to be good. So everything is going to be good, man. It's it will good. be. It will be. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much. And, um, yeah, you stay safe, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Absolutely. You too. Bye, man. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to the 55th episode of the This Is Reportage podcast. I absolutely love talking to Liam. He's such a lovely, lovely guy, let alone how fab he is as a photographer and how much knowledge he has and freely shares. He's just such a top guy. Hope you enjoyed listening. Head to thisreportage.com or thisreportagefamily.com to see that specific birth to grave reportage award that Liam discusses on the episode, as well as links through to the York Place Studios website. If you enjoyed listening to Liam, you may be interested in hearing my interview with his equally talented sister too. Check out episode 26 for my interview with the lovely Dominique Shaw. We also have lots more episodes of the podcast available with photographers such as Rocio Vega, David Scholes, Stephen Hershaft, Valter Antunes, Pedro Villela, Tyler Workin, and many more. If you're not yet a member of this reportage or this reportage family, check out all the benefits of joining us, including an unlimited number of images on your profile, 60 individual award and 18 story award entries per year, invites to our physical meetups and parties, exclusive discounts, hours of educational videos featuring tips and advice from some of the world's best photographers and much more. At the time of this episode's release, November 26, 2020, we're currently in judging week where our final collections of 2020 are currently being judged by our world-class juries. We're so excited to see who will make our wedding and family top photographers of the year list. Results will be revealed in a couple of weeks. After that, it'll be a whole new year of awards. Submissions will be open for our very first collections of 2021. And the deadline is the same for our wedding site, this is Repertage, and our family site, this is Repertage Family. Submit by 2359 GMT on 24th of January 2021. No poses, nothing staged. This is Repertage. And this is bye for now. Mm -hmm.